Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to another episode of Pop Culture Junkies. Today we're going to do an update for our $100 challenge. We're still buying the dip. Let's go. Alright everyone, welcome back to another episode of Buy the Dip, the $100 challenge. For those of you that don't know, this challenge is where every week I go out, take a surplus or whatever. I'm not spending on new comics, typically around 100 bucks, and I spend it on keys. What kind of keys can I find? Some of them are for my PC, some of them are getting graded to flip. Either way, we're buying keys with this money. We're buying the dip while the market's low and seeing what kind of deals we can score. So before I ever started filming the $100 challenge, the Buy the Dip segment, I'd actually started buying some books with the same kind of uh, kind of idea, and I had sent them off to CGC. And I actually got that shipment back. I was hoping to do a great big box opening for you guys, but I have to tell you, it's probably the absolute worst shipment I've ever gotten from CGC in my life. Let's keep it 100. Every deal isn't a great deal, and every flip doesn't turn into a great flip. Typically, you can make this hobby pay for itself by flipping things strategically. That was my hope with this certain shipment, but sometimes you take a bad beating on it and you don't get the grades you need. So I want to talk about that with you guys because it may be something that you go through if you try to do the same thing. Uh, so to start, I sent in the Spider Gwen number two. This was from the 2015 run, the original run. This is number two. This is the Sarah Pacelli variant. I believe this is a one in 25 variant. I wasn't really sure of the market on this book. I bought it for like 20 bucks. I was pretty sure I could at least sell it for 75 to 100. <clears throat> 75 to 100 in a 9.8. This got a 9.4. It is not worth, it's not even worth the 20 bucks at this point. So I'll crack it, I'll press it, and I'll probably resend it because this one I believe I can still get value out of. And that's something we'll talk about too with this next book on how I'm not going to get value out of it. So this next book was a Superman number one. These were selling in 9.8 for just about 100 bucks, 75 to 100 bucks. I bought it for I think eight, I think it was eight or ten dollars I paid for this book. Figured I'd send it in, right? It's 25 bucks to grade it, it's 32 all in. If I get anywhere from 50 to 100, I'm making money. The problem with this book now is if I send it in to get graded again. This book, I'm not, I'm already in it at 35, 40 bucks. If I go in another $26, $24 to get it graded again, $26 with shipping, I guess, because it's going to cost at least $2 to ship, I'm now going to be in that $50 to $60 range. If this book only sells for $75, that's a $15 profit. Um, I, I might just be better to crack this book raw and just leave it in my PC, to be honest. Next up is Batman number 567. Now, I was positive this book was going to get a 9.8. So this book, unlike the others, where it's not going to, the other Superman wasn't worth repressing and sending in again. This one actually is. To get back all the money I spent so far, I would have to send in that Batman. It would have to come back at 9.8, and I would have to sell it at the premium of 200 to 250 to make back the money I spent sending in this shipment of books as a whole. That's kind of where it is. So this is when you're when you're weighing the gamble of sending in books to flip and 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 seeing if you can come out ahead. This is kind of the bad beat you can take sometimes, guys. Just know that this is out there. I don't, I'm don't. i not the richest person in the world by any means. Do I have some disposable income that lets me do these things? Yes. Some other people don't. So I, I just want to caution everyone when you, you see get-rich-quick dollar signs. Doesn't always work out that way. Please be careful. Please be responsible. Next book I'm going to show you. This is Daredevil number 9. This came back in a 9.4. This is the first appearance of Echo. This book... In a 9.8, uh, again, was another 200 to $250 seller. This one got a 9.4. This one also said because of a crease on the spine. And this one I can't actually see. This one is wholly my fault. This one I did not take out of uh, the top loader to actually inspect it before I sent it in. It looks good enough kind of as it was, and I didn't really give it a good once over. If I had, I think I totally would have saw this, and I totally could have pressed it. However, I was seeing dollar signs in my eyes and being lazy and I just sent all this shit off. This one is interesting because this one is going to be worth the press. I'm going to press this book. I'm going to send it back in, see if we can get that grade bumped up to where it should be at a 9.8. I think this is an easily correctable defect and this is my fault. Last, not least, is an Exiles number three. I sent in two copies of this book. This one also came back with a 
crease issue up here near the spine is not color breaking and is not an extreme crease. It is very noticeable though, and I can tell you without a doubt, again, I would never have sent a book in with that on it. However, clearly that's the book I got back, so I have to accept that I potentially did. This book was selling for, I just sold one, so I sent in two of these. One did come back 9.8, I just sold it for 250. Uh, so I know that that is the market on this book right this second. This one will be worth pressing and sending in again, hopefully between this one and the Daredevil, I can make back the money I lost on all these other books and potentially still come out ahead. Let's talk about the books I bought this week for a second. So $100 challenge this week, I bought in Batman number one. If you didn't know, this is the first time they ever rebooted Batman. This is the new 52 Batman. Prior to this issue, they had not rebooted the Batman series before. This was the first reboot. This is the first new number one. So there's been, since been one more. They're currently on volume three. If you compare that to like Spider-Man, they're on like volume seven or eight. So while this isn't as big a deal as it once was, it still is a pretty big deal. And for a Batman collector like myself, it's a huge deal because I'm never going to own the actual Batman number one from the original series. So this one, about as close as I can get to a Batman number one that's legit, not a reprint, etc. This is a new series, Batman number one. It costs 50 bucks. To get this graded, if it got a 9.8, this book only goes for about 100 bucks graded. So if I paid 50, I send it in for 25, I get it back, I sell it for 100, I'm all in at 75, I'm making 25 bucks. If this book does not sell, if I went down that road, it wouldn't be salvageable. To get it regraded would be a whole other $25. I'd now be all the way under and the book would be below the price it's worth. So this book is gonna go on my PC. I'm not gonna take a risk on this one. It's just gonna go on my PC for my Batman keys that I collect for the Batman books that I love. Next, X Factor number six. I also purchased this week. I bought this one uh, for around 40 to 50 bucks. This one actually had a very noticeable kind of fold in the bottom right corner. It wasn't color breaking, it wasn't severe, it was pressable. And this book has actually been in my press. Uh, I humidified it, I pressed it over the past week, twice. And it's pretty much gone down there. I may press it one more time, but this one is gonna be worth the exchange. If I can get a 9.8 on this book, again, it's in that $250 range. This one's kind of worth a double gamble, right? Do I potentially send it in? see if i pressed it enough if i didn't and i have to send it a second time it'll still be worth it in the long run if i can pull off that 98 that is really not a great model for business to repeat send books so i'm going to press a couple other books that are going to go in the shipment while i do that this one will be sitting out and we'll see how it actually comes up lift we'll see if this reverts at all or if it stays the same as it is Again, it's not, I know it was there, so I know where to look for it. I don't think if you were actually looking at this book, you would see that as a crease. You would, you would see it more as just a small, small, tiny potential defect. Could just be the ink on the cover. That's how small it is on there. I feel pretty confident otherwise this would get a 9.8. So we'll see how it works out over the next week. Sometimes when you press books, they can revert a little bit back. And so it's, I want to kind of see what this one does with this older paper and whatnot. And if I need to press it again, I will press it another time. But that brings me to my last point, what I learned in all this. What did I learn, right? It's all about self-accountability. Just a lot of this was my fault. I sent these books in, they got these grades, and what did I learn? I learned that I have a press upstairs and I should fucking use it. Like it's just sitting there doing nothing half the time. So from now on, every $100 challenge book I send in is getting a press. I don't care how good it looks. It's going in the press before I ship them out at the end of the month. That's it right there. Use your resources, guys. Don't be an idiot like me. If you have a press and you're sending books into CGC, press your books. What's the worst that can happen? It gets a little sharper than it was before. Again, don't learn the lesson the hard way like I did. Don't start seeing dollar signs before you have them. You know, I made a video a year ago telling you guys to kill your darlings. Don't, don't always think you're gonna get a 9.8, plan on a 9.6 and go from there. I should have done that myself and I should have looked these books over better and I should have pressed them before I sent them in. So that's what I'll be doing in the future. That's the story of my bad beat. I hope you guys enjoy this content. Remember to hit like and subscribe and I will keep you updated on the $100 challenge as we keep moving along. Thanks for watching.